Good morning. Here we are, live. It's Monday. Time to get motivated. Gotta get my backdrop right so you're not distracted, right? <laughs> Probably distracted if I'm fixing it while we hop on. Okay, there's Blair, yay. I don't see you here yet. There you go. And I have Blair Cridge on with me. And hopefully we can get that down. Oh. <laughs> Why are you laughing? So you don't hear the weird echo? Now I can tell you're talking. Oh, shoot. Do you think it's the, um... Do you think it's the, um... Oh, now it's your fun. Fun. I don't hear it anymore. Do you hear it? Okay. okay. I do, I but, do you but you just take just it away. Take it away. I'm going to turn these off. Okay, let's ask everybody, too. You guys, let us know if the sound is good. We all know Facebook Live has been going a little wonky lately. So let us know in the comments below if you can hear me okay. And then at least say something really quick so they can hear if they can hear you. I think this is taking out of So, all right. Well, we're so excited you guys are doing this. Happy Monday. Are we still talking? Right. Oh, so much better. So, uh, Crystal, let us know if we're both okay now. And um, let us know if you can hear Lisa okay. And if my name is Blair, for those of you that don't know me, so let me let us know if you can hear me okay as well. We're excited to be on here with you guys. Can you believe we're like a couple weeks away from Christmas? Crazy. No. I know. I know. Okay. Okay. It sounds perfect on my end. So, um, everybody just let us know. Pamela, I saw that you were on here. Can you let us know if we both sound okay? So we can go ahead and get started sharing. While you guys are joining us, let us know where you're joining us from. It's so exciting. I already see a few people hopping on here that I know live in the UK. So that's super exciting. I know we have people all over joining us. So we love hearing what it's like where you live and where you live, what the weather like. Elise isn't going to like to hear this, but it is like 79 and gorgeous here in Florida. It's just perfect right now. Um, it's so nice. All right. So Blair sounds okay, but not Elise. I'll just smile. I'll just smile. And you <laughs> and you well, you can pop in every once in a while. How about that? So I'm excited. Okay, here we go. Sorry, my blanket fell. So I'm super excited that Elise invited me on here, you guys. My name's Blair Critch. I live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And Elise and I have been friends for a long time. And we actually found ourselves on, found our, our friendship, found each other on Facebook. How crazy is that, right? And we've been friends now since, I think we figured out the other day, it was either 2009 or 2010, that we were introduced to each other. And we were introduced to each other through Facebook because Elise was doing an online jewelry party. Some of you might remember her days of selling jewelry. And she was selling jewelry online on an online party. And I saw the jewelry and I was like, wow, that stuff's really cute. And then I looked at the price and I was like, wow, I can't afford that right now. Uh, we had just, uh, prior to that, I was a kindergarten teacher. I've been home for five years with my two boys. And during that time, we went through a bankruptcy. And some of you guys might be able to relate with that. But what happened for us was we lived in South Florida. My husband's job was wrapped up in the mortgage industry. We had taken all of the money that we were making during the great, you know, uh, high points. And as young 20-year-olds, we put some in the stock market. We, put, we bought 10 houses to rent out. And we thought we were doing all the right things, right? We had money in all different places. We were diversified, right? But when the market crashed, we also had a couple of hurricanes down here in South Florida and nobody could afford to pay for their rent. And we went through all of our money and we just finally got to the point where we were told you're gonna have to file for bankruptcy. And so we lost all 10 houses and we were in rebuild stage. And so I was actually right about to go back to work. I was in the middle of applying to go back to teaching, which I don't know why I thought somehow that would help because in South Florida you make I was making uh, $30,000 a year when I left, 29 to be exact. And so I just knew I was going to have to go back that fall, and it was spring. And I saw the jewelry is cute, too expensive for me. But then that exact same week, I saw it again on the Today Show. 
and I saw it again on the front of a magazine or like in a magazine um, that somebody had given me and I thought oh my gosh I keep seeing this story it's so cute and I reached out to Elise and I said hey listen maybe you could just do a show for me I have a lot of friends who could afford it and I could get some free jewelry and it's super cute and it'd be fun I need some fun right now and we started talking she's like well that's not gonna work I'm in Montana you're in Florida but you should really think about doing this you'd be one of the pioneers for Florida it's a new company and I can remember the feeling in my stomach of like, there's no way. That sounds so scary. First of all, I've never sold anything in my life. I'm not a salesperson. I'm a teacher. I have young kids at home. I can't start a business right now. I'm in rebuild phase of our life. Um, there were so many reasons of I can't. And maybe you can relate with that, right? So many feelings inside of you of like, that's not me. That's meant for somebody else. That. That life is for somebody else. And so as Elise started to share with me what she did to share the product and make money and how being a teacher was a valuable resource because I was used to training and connecting with people and all these different things, I decided to take a chance on myself. Actually, somebody else believed in me more than I believed in myself. Elise believed in me just from talking to me on the phone. She said, you know, I really think you'd be great at this. I think you should give yourself a chance. What if you just buy the product, have a couple shows, and see what happens. And I called up my mom, and my mom immediately said, you would be great at this. I will pay for that promoter pack for you. Or we called it, um, I don't even remember what we called it, but anyway. Sample. She said, what did we call it? <laughs> yeah, sample. And so she said, uh, my mom said, I'll, I'll buy that sample pack for you to get started. I really know that you'll be great at this. Well, long story short, I had a couple of shows. My friends fell in love with the, with the product. So many people wanted to host shows that um, after the first two months of selling the jewelry, I was making more a month than I ever did teaching. And my husband has an entrepreneur spirit, a lot like Elise. And they were both saying the same things to me. They were like, you love people. You love to connect with others. You love helping others. Um, you love fashion. This is the perfect thing for you. Go for it. See what can happen for a year. Don't go back to teaching. Let's go all in. You put on a jean jacket? <laughs> so anyways, long story short, I went in and I ran for the first four years. And I can tell you that I know those feelings that people can have of self-doubt, of not thinking that you're good enough or that you don't have the qualities or the skills. And every time those kind of things came up against me, um, Elise was always such an amazing mentor to me, but also a friend. And she would always say to me, well, if you're having a hard time closing a sale, go on YouTube and watch a video about how to close a sale. Or if I would say, well, I don't know, um, you know, what to say when somebody says this to me. She'd say, well, go Google it and find find somebody. Go find Brian Tracy or somebody else out there that inspires you that can help walk you through and learn the skills that you need to learn. You didn't just show up one day to be a teacher and start teaching. You went through four years of college to be a teacher. So don't expect that you're going to know this day one. And so I started really filling myself up and learning but not a ton to be honest until one day at least introduced me to the product that we both uh, represent right now and share with people that's when i really up my um personal development and the reason is is because it wasn't home based having parties with a bunch of women anymore and it also wasn't a product that i was super comfortable with i mean selling jewelry was easy for me i love fashion I, I was, uh, you know, on what were the latest trends, how to make people feel pretty. That was kind of easy for me. But when I started on this product and I had crazy amazing results on the product, I could feel the difference within the very first week. I saw the difference in my husband. And um, I just knew it was something I had to share with others. And it was a deep feeling inside of me. And maybe you guys have had that feeling before. And I'm a really big, big pros and cons list person. And so I was scared to leave the jewelry business to sell a vitamin supplement. And I had a lot of cons about it. But my husband and I really sat down. And all of the pros that I wrote on my list were about others. It was I could help others with this product. People could feel better. If they feel better, they can go out and make changes in the world. They could be a better mom, a better dad, a better um, boss, or a better employee. They could be more helpful in their community, volunteering and being part of their community. It was, I could help people within their first two weeks to make over $1,000 in cash. That's life-changing. I could have used that when we were going through our bankruptcy and I was, you know, really scrounging for money for groceries. Um, I knew that, you know, the product was truly going to change people and it was changing my husband and I. And so all of the cons, as you guys can imagine, were about me. It was, I'm scared to sell something. 
I don't know enough about this industry. I don't know enough about vitamins and health and wellness. What if people think I'm just trying to sell them something? What if I'm not successful? I mean, it was all these doubts, self-doubt, right? And when we sat down as a family and discussed if I should leave the Dory business to go into this new business in the vitamin supplement world, it wasn't also just about the product working. It was about being part of something at the very beginning. It was about joining something that was a movement, something different, a cloud-based business opportunity with no brick and mortar building. I knew that was the way that the world was going. I just literally two weeks before starting on the product was reading an article in Forbes magazine about how malls are going to be gone in the next 20 years. People are not going to be shopping in a store anymore. And some of you probably want to throw tomatoes at my face right now for saying that, but this is the article that I was reading. And the reality is, is except this time of the year, I do like going into the mall because I love all the Christmas decorations. But besides this time of the year, I mean, I order everything online. I don't know if you guys do, but I order all of my, um, you know, shopping things like my paper towels, my toilet paper, my cleaning supplies, uh, anything like that. I have it on some spread and save with Amazon. It comes in every every month or every other month, depending on how I have it set up. I don't even have to think about it. When I need a new pair of jeans, I go onto Nordstrom.com. I know exactly what kind of jeans I like. And so for me, it just lined up with what I see that's happening in the future. And I always think about Netflix, right? Who would have loved to have stock in Netflix when they first came out, right? Remember when you used to send away for DVD discs and you were like, okay, this is kind of a cool concept. I don't know. I still kind of like going into Blockbuster or my neighborhood video store because you can kind of see a little bit more. And I don't know if I want to be on a subscription for DVDs, right? I was still kind of skeptical. But then when it all came online and you could watch your movies on demand immediately, Blockbuster was obsolete. They were gone. Literally, I drove up to my Blockbuster and they were closed down. Like there wasn't even any notice, right? So that was what I saw with this company. It was changing the way things are going to be done. And it was with a product that worked. And so when we sat down with that pros and cons list, my husband looked at me and he said something that I'll never forget. He said, all the pros are about others and all the cons are about you. How do you want to live your life? And so today as we're sharing Motivation Monday, I challenge you, how do you want to live your life? What is the purpose of your life? Why are you doing what you're doing? And I know a lot of people are tuning in and they're viewing and they're looking for a side hustle or they're in a side hustle right now. And you really need to think about why are you doing it? What is the purpose? What is your big purpose of your life? What do you want to see happen? And that's when, when you really dig deep and you realize what your greater purpose is, that's when you'll dig in and you'll take the time to make yourself better to change the lives of others. So for me, when my husband said that to me, I remembered that the mission of the company that we're with is to help people live a life that they deserve. And I thought, I can't think of a better life than that. Yes, I want to bring in money for my family. There are things that we want to achieve as a family. But the best legacy I can leave my kids is for when I'm gone, somebody to say to them, oh, your mom was Blair Critch. She was so amazing. She changed my life. This is what she did for me and my family. Or saying something like, your mom's Blair Critch. I remember when she dropped off groceries at our front door because we couldn't afford to buy any groceries for ourselves. Or I remember one Christmas when she dropped off a gift card so that we could have, you know, Christmas. That changed our lives. And then we passed it on to somebody else. And you guys that know me know my all-time favorite movie in the whole wide world is Pay It Forward. I truly believe if we could all just do something nice for somebody else and then they paid it forward, it'd be such a different place to live. So long story short, I jumped in with both feet. And when I asked Elise what she wanted to talk about today, she said, what were the adversities that you had to push through to become successful and be where you are today? It was the self-doubt. It was all the negative things that I thought was going to happen if I didn't succeed in this. So instead of allowing myself to be caught up in the what if people make fun of me? What if nobody wants to buy this product? What if nobody has a great result like me? What if I can't bring in enough money for my family? What if we can't afford to pay the mortgage? I mean, guys, I could go on and on and on, right? Um, but instead, I decided to dig in on personal development, make myself a master of the things that I was most worried about. So first thing I was most worried about was how was I going to share this product in an authentic way? So I learned how to do that, um, how to close the sale. I started learning about mindset, 
an abundance thinking, right? Because that was something, and, and Elise will sometimes still get out to me and my husband about dumb things like, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna upgrade my flight to business class or first class because that costs you much more money. And, you know, then they'll remind me, okay, well, if that allows you to work harder while you're on the plane and get work done, how much are you worth per hour? And things like that. It's just changing of a mindset, of a mindset of needing to keep everything and being worried about my money, being worried about my time, being worried about my business, and instead going to abundance, about being so happy and grateful for all the things that I have, happy and grateful for what I know is coming, and setting my mind, my intentions, my heart on those things. So the biggest thing that happened to me when we first started this business was my husband and I together read the book Miracle Morning. If you've never read it, he read the one for real estate agents, I went, read the one for network marketers, changed my life. And every morning now, since for the last four and a half years, we wake up in the morning, we take our three steps of the Thrive experience, and then I get busy with my morning routine. And that really gets me focused on what's most important. You know, I spend time in silence and affirmations and visualization. I uh, scribe, I journal, I never journaled before. Um, the, the times that I ever journaled was maybe during our bankruptcy or another thing about me is my husband has addiction. When I found out he had um, an addiction to pain pills, that was a really hard time for us. I did journal then, but it was all um, journaling from a mindset of woe is me and how am I going to get through this and what am I going to do? And now my journaling is more about abundance and what's coming and how excited I am about it and what I can do for others and what my purpose is. and. When I feel those feelings again, which we all feel at some point, self-doubt, frustration, aggravation, listen, nobody's always perfect. When I feel those things, I do still journal about them, but I take a minute after I write it all down to, to do some deep breaths, and I change it into, okay, what am I going to do to change this situation? What do I want to see happen? I'm going to visualize that. I'm going to affirm that. I'm going to let that grow and see the positive instead of seeing the negative. So... I've really worked on myself a lot over the last four and a half years because my mission is about others. And I don't have time to slow myself down with self-doubt, pity, um, being worried, or, you know, coming from that small mindset. Instead, I need to come from abundance, from happiness, from excitement, because I have so much to share with other people. Um, at least I feel like I was kind of all over the place. Is there any... Sounds good. <laughs> Um, and, and yeah, you know, the other thing too is making a decision, right? So my decision was this, I want this to be my forever home. This business, this product is something I am so excited about every single day. I'm excited about sharing it and being part of it. So the obstacles that come into my way are just that, like I know they're just little small obstacles that are going to pop up. And so instead of taking time to wallow in it, when somebody says no to me, or somebody makes fun of me, right? I made fun of Elise, you guys, for six months. Literally, I made fun of her. I thought that what she was selling was snake oil. I thought she was crazy. Um, I didn't think that that product worked at all that she was sharing. And I'm sharing that because what if she had just like crawled into a hole? I mean, she knew I was saying those things. We were still friends. I wasn't being mean about it. I was just kind of like, that's crazy. They're buying it from you, Elise, because you're adorable and you're sweet and people just, like want to be you. So they're just buying the product, but I doubt that it can do all these things. Um, and so what if she had just gone and like, you know, wallowed in that? And no, instead she was like, okay, well, one day you're going to be ready and I got to go help a lot of people who are ready now. And that was it. She just clicked and changed her mindset every time she heard me say something negative. She turned it back to what her main mission was, and that was to help other people and to help change their lives. So the biggest thing that I could say is there's going to be obstacles. You know, I always, it reminds me of the Bible where there are seven years of famine and seven years of overabundance, right? And I always try to remind myself that. You still need to be really smart with your money. You shouldn't, you know, yes, we have abundance, but we shouldn't spend it like crazy. You still have to be really smart and practical with what God gives us. But I also know that even if those harder times come, it's okay because I know that I have a greater uh, passion, purpose, and mission and that's what I'm focused on. So are there times where I go a week or two and I can't get a new customer or a new promoter or my business isn't moving the way I want it to? Yes. I've been in this, in this particular business with Lavelle for four and a half years now. 
And I'll tell you, I've had amazing months, like crazy amazing months. And then I've had some months where I've gone backwards. And I bet a lot of you can relate with that. But it isn't something where I'm like, oh my goodness, two months in a row I went backwards. I've got to get out. I've got to find something new. The momentum's gone. Something's not working. I'm out. No, instead I dig deep. I go, okay, something's not working here. Uh, the product works. The business works. Other people are having success. What am I doing differently right now? Am I not focused on the income producing activities? Am I not focused on others? Am I too focused on myself? Am I helping the people in my business? Am I, you know, reaching out to new people every single day and trying to help them? And those are the things in those moments. It's self-reflection. Am I doing the things that I need to do? Is it lining up with my purpose? And as we get close to the holidays and end of year, can you believe that? We're going to end 2018 in just a few weeks, guys. As we get close to ending that year, have you done the things you wanted to do this year? Have you reached the goals that you set forth for yourself this year? Or did you even write a goal? Because we know that if you don't write things, you have a much smaller chance of achieving them. You guys can Google that. Harvard did a whole study on people who write down their goals have a higher chance of achieving their goals. But it's not even just something that you need to go find proof in Harvard. It's in the Bible. It says very clearly in the Bible. In Habakkuk 2.2, it says, write it down and make it clear. Right? It also says in the Bible, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. That's in Matthew. I mean, you've got to know that these things are true, so you've got to write it down. So if you've never written it down for 2018, okay, that's okay. It's almost over. But you can write it down for 2019. And so as I look at my, like, I, we do it quarterly in our house. We write down our goals quarterly. I never was taught that as a kid. It's something that we have learned, my husband and I, together, and we're teaching our children. Because in our home, growing up in my home, my parents were amazing. They're great parents. But they always taught us to be employees. They were of the employee mindset. You will figure out what you want to do before you go to college so we don't waste our money. You will go to college. You will graduate in four years. You will get a job. That job will be the job that you have until you retire. Then you will take night classes to get your master's so you can make more money at that job. So when you retire, you'll have a little bit more money, right? And then when you, maybe if you want, you can go on again for, you know, more education if you want. But that's just to make more money. The education wasn't to learn, to grow, to be a better, you know, at whatever. It was really just to make more money, right? And so I, that's what I was taught. And so I was never taught any kind of entrepreneur spirit. What's ironic is now, after being in this industry, my parents seeing the success that I've had. My dad retired. They live here in Florida. He got into the stock market. He self-taught himself. He's made more money in the last seven years playing with the stock market himself and learning it than he ever made his whole life as an employee. And you know what he tells my kids now? Don't ever be an employee. Own your own yeah. business, take care of yourself, and you'll have a much better life because you'll be in charge of your future. And so it's interesting. And so those, you know, we didn't learn setting goals, setting vision boards. So the reason I'm sharing that with you guys is because you don't have a clear focus on what you want. You haven't written it down. Why would you ever get there? I mean, how are you going to get there? Yeah, some people just all of a sudden win the lottery. Great for them. But guess what? Most people that win the lottery lose all their money. Why? Because they didn't set up what they want to do with it. They didn't have any goals. They didn't have the mindset. They didn't have the vision. So set yourself up for success. Spend the next three weeks of December thinking about what is my purpose? What is my goal? What are some actionable things that I want to see happen in the first four months of 2019? What are some financial things I want to see happen? What are some things with your family that you want to see happen? What are some things with your business you want to see happen? And what are you going to do to make the world a better place? What is your greater mission? What is that? Maybe it's that you want to give, be able to give 10% of every single paycheck back to your local church. Maybe you want to help build a school somewhere else. Maybe you want to um, be able to have time freedom to go serve somewhere in your community. It doesn't always have to be a big financial thing. It could be time. Time is super valuable to a lot of organizations like Habitat for Humanity, they need your time. So figure it out and set the goal, write it down, make yourself a vision board and focus on that. And so every day, like mine's literally right across from me, you guys can't see it, but that is what keeps me going each and every day. So no matter if my business goes backwards or my business goes forward, my, what I do every day doesn't change. 
I'm focused on the goal of what I want to see happen. I'm excited, I'm passionate, even on the days where I don't see the greatest success. I'm excited, I'm passionate on the days that are great and, and awesome, right? So no matter what, I'm speaking on the same path. And the, the more you get into that mindset and the more you set the goal, you have the vision board in front of you. You're focused on the things that you need to be focused on. You're filling yourself up. They call me. The more you're focused on that, uh, I forgot to do do not disturb. Sorry, Lee. <laughs> oh, that sounds better. Oh, it sounds better now? Yeah. Well, look at that. So the more you're focused on those things, guys, what will happen is you'll start to self-correct yourself, right? So now when somebody maybe is rude to me on the phone or through a Facebook messenger or somebody's not happy with something that I did, instead of getting my feelings hurt or being upset, I look straight across at my vision board and I see something that reminds me, oh, this is why I'm doing this. That's okay. I am happy and grateful that I am focused and energized on changing people's lives. So I don't get sucked up into any of those things. I don't get sucked up into what other people think, what other people are doing, how they perceive me. Instead, I'm so focused on what are those goals? What is that vision? What do I want to see happen over the next four months? So I know that was a, a lot of all different all over the place, but at least anything you want to add in there or ask? It was, well, so no. We all said it is better now. Yeah, it was so bizarre. All of a sudden, when you got that call, it went to good sound. And now I'm not echoing. No. Now I'm wishing we just started over. <laughs> I know. This is funny. Now we're going to have to ask people to call us when we're first starting to face a glass. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> call. Just call me. <clears throat> so, um, I feel like. I feel like a lot of times people just think that when, when they see someone who's become extremely successful, that they were born that way, that they just had this, this vision and this mindset that the blinders were on, they knew the right people, right? And it, it's like they, people just assume, I don't know why we do this, it's, it's something about being human is we just assume Maybe it's the old stories about the kings and queens in the kingdom. And, you know, you were born into yeah. that. I don't know. But here in the United States, and I mean, all of the different countries our business is in, everyone has the opportunity to choose to be successful. Because the cool thing about being in this business is you don't need a special education or degree. You don't need to be born a certain race or female or male. You don't have to be a certain age. I mean, one of our youngest millionaires is 23. Like, it's incredible to think that you can, um, this is a level playing field in this industry. You can just come into this and start to work on you and work on what you believe you deserve. Because that worthiness piece is also what holds people back. That they subconsciously hold the belief that they're only worth X amount of money or X amount of success. They get close to that and then they sabotage it in some way. And so for you, Blair, how did you work through that process? I just did that thing again. I remember we were at the retreat and I was doing this. You made fun of me. Yes. <laughs> I, you like, I was like, are you playing an instrument? Like, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> That's actually, that's a really great question, Elise, because I don't know that anybody's ever asked me that question. So I don't know that I've ever verbalized how I got past that. I will say one book that really slapped me across the face and made me um, really start working on that was Spirit Driven Success by Danny yeah. Johnson. Um, Elise introduced me to that book when I first started with Lavelle because she's like, big things. Like, we got big things going on here. You are going to be a millionaire. And I did I didn't have that belief in myself. I mean, again, I came from yeah. the mindset that, you know, I was going to be a teacher for 30 years and then retire. And as a teacher, like the most I was probably ever going to make, you know, after years of, of you know, it kind of increases each couple of years is like maybe 45, 50,000. Right. And then you retire and you get about the same. So I did not have the belief that I was going to be a millionaire or multimillionaire, all these different things. Um, even though I saw other people doing it. And so that book in particular, really made me deal with why, why don't, why would I not want to have those things? What, what do I think that money is associated with and why haven't I pushed past it? 
And I love, I don't know if you guys are into this, but I love showing my kids stories of people who have, have persevered through things. Um, we watched, it happened to be around the same time I was reading the book, Spirit Driven Success. I saw the story of Jim Carrey, the comedian, Jim Carrey, right? He's very eccentric. He's all over yeah. the place. But when he decided he wanted to be a comedian, he lived in Canada with his family. They had nothing. They were so poor. And he left with not even a dollar to his name and slept in his car for a year in LA, trying to get onto a show or a comedy act or whatever. And sometimes he'd do some stand up comedy, but like it doesn't pay very much. It just basically paid enough for him to eat a meal and then he'd be back in his car again. And so I think so often we do look at people and we just assume that they got to where they are because they knew the right people. They had the right skills. They had the right look. They knew somebody, whatever. But the reality is, no, they had to climb through some adversity, but their their vision of what they wanted was crystal clear. And so that's what I really changed my focus on when I was reading that book. And, try, and I, I saw what was going on with this company. I mean, I saw people doing amazing things very quickly, and I wanted that. And so when I started thinking about what I wanted to achieve with this business and with my life, I started planning it out in my head. What would it feel like to pay off this? What would it feel like to be able to have this much money in the bank account? Like prior to my husband and I going through our bankruptcy, you know, we used to have $200,000 cash in our bank account at all times because one of our financial planners said you need to have two years worth of income in your bank account at all times in case something happens. Um, well, that did keep us afloat for a while until we had to file bankruptcy. And so I just envisioned that again. I was like, I'm going to have $200,000 back in my bank account again. And this time I'm going to be the one that does it, not Ryan. It's going to be me. And I'm going to take some of that burden off of him. You know, it was hard after our bankruptcy. You know, he was working two, three jobs. He also had some knee problems. And during that time, he started taking pain pills that the doctor gave him for the knee um, and for some of the procedures that they did for him. And then all of a sudden he realized, oh, well, when I take my pain pills, I can stay up all night. So now I can work a third job online and provide for my family because we, we're rebuilding right now, right? And so that's what started his addiction to pills. So listen, we all have choices. That was a choice he made. It wasn't a smart choice. It was the wrong choice. But I'm sharing that because I knew that he had gone through some really hard things trying to rebuild us, right? We still weren't where we wanted to be. So I was determined. I was like, I'm going to be the one that brings that $200,000 cash into our bank account that keeps it there. I'm going to be the one that this year allows us to not have our car payments to worry about anymore. I'm going to be the one that gets to make sure that we don't have to worry about a house payment anymore. And that allows him to now enjoy our family, which to me was more important than any dollar. Like he had really been having very small amount of time with our kids because he was working multiple jobs trying to help us. So all of a sudden my focus and my vision became so clear. And I was able to put that on a vision board and think about it 24 seven. And so I was running at a very fast pace. So the thought of me not being able to be a millionaire went out the window because instead all I thought about all the time was how exciting it was going to be when I saw $200,000 cash in my bank account. How exciting was it going to be when I was able to tell other people that we haven't paid for our car, you know, and now it's been four and a half years. How exciting was it going to be when I didn't have to worry about what that bank account looked like when I wrote my mortgage payment? Like how many of you have had that feeling in your stomach where you're like sick to your stomach because you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even want to go check my bank account right now because I don't know what it's at because I'm scared to look, right? Now I check it and I'm so excited to see what it's at. And, you know, and I'm always giving myself a new goal. Oh, it's here. Okay. That means in the next two weeks, I want it to be here. And that's really exciting. And the other thing too is, is I really love helping people. It's something that Ryan and I both have always done, even during our bankruptcy. And it wasn't much, obviously we couldn't help much, but we never stopped giving because we always felt like we have way more than other countries, way more than other people. And now I get to do so much of that. And it's so much fun to me and this time of year, especially. And so in our family, we've changed everything. I mean, everything. We wake up every morning, the four of us, and we sit down at our table at 7 a.m. And our kids have to write in a journal what they're happy and grateful for and their prayer requests every single morning. 
Um, and that's because we have an amazing life, but you have to choose to have an amazing life and you have to, to do the things that you need to do. And so that's what we're trying to show our kids now. And during this time of the month, we're talking every single morning about who can we bless? Who needs something right now? What have you heard? Have you heard anybody talk at school? Have you heard anybody talk at church? You know, have you seen anything in the neighborhood? Like what, what can we do to help others? And so again, it's a long answer, but it's about mindset. We just shifted our mindset. We changed it. We decided that this was a life we wanted and we could have it. If Jim Carrey could be sleeping in a car for a year and then all of a sudden get on the movie, I think his first movie was, um, he wrote down, you guys have to find his story, but it was something like he wrote down an exact amount he wanted to get paid and he visualized it every single day. And when he got signed for Ace Ventura, you guys, it was the exact amount he had written on that check. The exact amount. It was crazy. So, you know, I, that moment made me realize the power of our brain and of our subconscious and why not? Why, why, why are we not putting out there what we want? Absolutely. So to recap for you all, I think it's important that you nurture the desire because each of you have this little seed of desire that God has planted within you and your mind will go there if you allow yourself some digital detox time where because I I was even thinking of and noticing recently how whenever I go about town even the moment someone's in line they're on their phone entertaining their brain so what if you choose to create some open thought loops during your day where you can nurture that desire that vision that you have inside of yourself rather than go into distraction so that's first and foremost like if you're driving down the road if you're waiting in line start to ask these big questions What's my purpose? Who can I serve? How can I give back? Open my eyes to see where somebody is in need. And then you'll notice that the answers will start to come fast and furious. So I love to say, marry the vision, not the process. So Blair had the vision for what she desired to create in her life. And she recognized that there would be setbacks along the way. Which Blair, that's my, I think that's why I do this because <laughs> I'm like, this is our starting point and here we go up True. and down along the way. <laughs> True. <laughs> so, um, so you're married to the vision, not the process. You're going to be flexible and you have it out in front of you on the vision board. You visualize it with feeling and then you take the action every single day. And you listen to that prompting because you have that prompting in your heart that says, Share it with this person or compliment this person. Smile at that person. Uh, maybe you tip the bill. I love doing that. To show your faith that you believe more money is coming. So that's my challenge to each and every one of you watching right now is next time you eat out, tip the bill. And you can hashtag and share that on social media. It's not to be braggish. It's just to say, yes, I have faith that abundance is coming my way and I'm going to pay it forward today. And what were we going to say, Blair? I was just going to say, I'm so glad that you just said that. So, okay, tip for success, guys. Whenever somebody's speaking that you want to be like, like, Elise and I are really good friends, but I still want to be where Elise and Rob are, right? So I take notes still. <laughs> I love like, I, yeah, I love it. It's like how I continue to learn. But one of the biggest things that Elise just said that was an aha moment for me is I never understood the tip the bill thing. I mean, I understand it in the moment you're helping that person. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but I felt like it was so braggy and I'm very careful about, um, in the Bible, it says, do not let others see what your hand does right to others. And so I've always thought it was so, bra- but what you just said was huge for me. It's not about being braggy. It was about having faith that more money will come. Yeah. So if I go out with my kids tonight to dinner and the bill $60 and I tip $60, I have faith that next week I'm going to get paid and it's going to make up for that $60, right? I'm not worried about the $60 and instead, you know, spiraling down, worrying about money. Instead, I have complete faith and abundance. And that, I'm so glad that you brought that up, Elise, because I've never heard it explained that way. And that's really huge. Thank you. Well, and I think when we give and if we show it on social media, we're not doing it to be braggish. We're doing it to inspire. And and to do and when we inspire others through our giving that's a ripple effect and so when i say tip the bill i like to do the visualization of our hands are like this i mean i remember i grew up in a family where my parents were all like always like 10 to 15 percent on any tip 
you know. And so then my husband and I were always like, oh, we can't over tip. <laughs> like ridiculous. And then I started doing 25% and 50% and 100% of the bill. And so what I noticed, though, was in my building of faith that I started to see more abundance come in financially. But I had to rep I had to show that I was faithful in all the areas of my life. So I like to visualize it where your hands are like this tightly clenched when you're scarcely minded about money. But when you are when you recognize that money is energy flowing to and from you, like the tide going in and out, your hands are like this. Because when your hands are open and you're giving, you're also open to receiving. So remember, when someone offers to help you, accept their help that is them giving to you that is them showing their faith in the giving and receiving process and if we say no no i don't need any help then that's blocking them from being able to serve you uh, so there that's another little aside but <laughs> that's a really good point <laughs> all right well anything else you wanted to share before we signed off um no, I mean, I guess the biggest thing is, you guys, we are getting really close to the end of the year and the beginning of the new year. So don't just take these things that you're learning or that you're hearing and be like, that's really great. Instead, t really take that time. I love that Elise, Elise said open thought loop, right? Give yourself time for an open thought loop. What if you just set a timer even from now until the end of the year to give yourself 10 minutes a day of journaling? Figuring out what are those goals that you want to see happen in 2019? What are those things that you want to achieve? Um, I can put up here too. Uh, and actually, I need to get it um, fixed because the one that I have is from 2018. But we even made as a family, it's like it'll say, we, we decided what are the three most important things to us. For us, it's our faith, and then it's our family, and then it's our business. So for my kids, business is school, okay? So we have our three goals that we want to see happen with our faith and our personal relationship with God, or that even includes your body because, you know, that's how we got our body. It's a temple. So for us, it's like personal goals, three personal goals. Then the next one is three family goals. And that might be traveling or time that you guys want to spend or like days unplugged. You know, that's really important as a new year comes is how often a month are you going to unplug with your family? That's a goal that we had this year was to um, have one hour a night that we unplugged as a family, have one day a week that we unplugged as a family and one week a year that we unplugged as a family. So it's been very hard, but it's been our vision board for all of us. So our one hour a week is usually dinner time, right? It's 30 minutes a morning for breakfast. And then we do about a 30 minute dinner at night. No phones. Nobody's allowed to check. And then on Sundays, we do like half a day. We haven't made it to a full day yet because uh, both Ryan and I both work, you know, cloud-based businesses. And then we do one week a year where we go on a trip and we completely unplug and we try to make it about nature. So this last summer, it was Utah. We got to see some national parks, hike, be in the moment and not be sucked up by social media and you know, all those other things. So anyways, I'm sharing that because you want to think of what are the goals for my family? What are my goals for my business? What are my personal goals? Write them down and then make your vision board around that and get specific guys. What number do you want to see in that bank account? You know, what, what is it that you want to pay off? What is it that you want to do? Get specific so that your brain can see it so that you can visualize it. I love that Lisa said, connect with it. Like you want to feel yeah. that excitement about it. And then when you're saying it to yourself over and over again, get in that feeling of excitement use all of your senses yes i love it that's so good well yesterday and i'll i'll say i was a little bit run down this weekend um and i had been like when i get run down and i know this when i travel i get run down when i get home it's part of my process my body reacts to the stress of travel and that's normal and so i know this about myself so i don't come home i used to freak out and think oh it's all over but <laughs> <laughs> I my, my, I used to be an extremist, okay? Now I go, okay, this is where I'm at, and I'll I'll just unplug from social media completely, and I'll get out my journal, and I'll write, and I'll grab one or two inspirational books, but, um, like, I will just write and plan. So yesterday was a writing and planning a day, and I can't believe how exciting and incredible it is that what I came up with. I'm in the process of writing a workbook for success, and so I got a full chapter done. So I was really excited. And I didn't feel great and I still was able to do it. And part of it was because I got off social media because honestly, when I was on social media, I was looking at all these beautiful photos of people in Hawaii or in Florida, their beautiful sunshine. <laughs> 
and I see people on trips and, you know, with their friends and I'm like, oh, I can't do that right now and I don't feel good. And you know how you get. So it was a really great reminder yesterday that when you unplug, you get out your journal, you slow down and, you know, be still. There's a reason that that's in the Bible. Be still. It's because when you're still and you're not being fed by the world, you can go within and become spiritually fed. That's where these inspirational ideas and thoughts and plans and the divine action is, it comes from. So, and, and that builds confidence in itself right there because that's what's true. So anyway, I love that we were able to get this interview done today, Blair. And thank you for sending me my gift today. <laughs> that was so sweet of you. She sent me a- You have to tell everybody what cube. I sent you. Yeah. I will. She sent me the packing cube for my luggage. I'll do a little video on my Instagram. Um, but, and also she sent me the poopery. <laughs> <laughs> I sent her Christmas poopery. Right. Because, well, and partly because I'll just say it is the people that seem to be more emotional, intuitive, free flowing like myself versus type A like Blair or my husband, he wouldn't mind me saying, like we tend to just want to poop when we feel like it, where they tend to poop on the hour every day. <laughs> so yeah. we were talking about that on our, at our um, trip to Seattle. And um, I was just saying, oh, I can't and go I right like now. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, Carrie, poopery with you everywhere you go. She's like, I don't have poopery. I was like, you need poopery. <laughs> so that's the best Christmas gift, guys. Give people poopery. It's funny, they'll like it. Last year we did a um, Secret Santa thing um, with some friends and I gave uh, poopery, a bottle of balance and a roll of toilet paper. Oh my word, brilliant. I hope it was the Charmin Duck. <laughs> it was, it was like super soft. Yeah, yeah that's super what you funny. Need. That's what you need for yeah. those of you who are struggling <laughs> with the travel pooping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's okay, a great, you guys. Great Love you one all. to end on. <laughs> yes, we will be live again with another interview on Monday of next week. So make sure you click turn on your subscription or see first or whatever it is Facebook prompts you to do today. And we'll go live again next week with another leader who has overcome incredible challenges in their life. So thanks again. We love you all. Bye, guys. Bye.